Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to go over how to configure a DHCP server on a Cisco router in Packet Tracer and show you how DHCP works, explain a little bit what DHCP is. So if you want to learn about DHCP, make sure to watch this video to the end and like this video and subscribe for more videos like this and comment down below if this video helps you out or if you have any questions about the concepts. But without further ado, let's get into it. So someone in the last Packet Tracer video suggested that I may uh, posted these labs and allowed you guys to download them. So in the description down below or in the comments, I'm gonna have a link to my website where you could download all these labs from. So if you have any trouble downloading the labs, please let me know, but the labs will be on my website. So go to the link down below and you'll be able to uh, access them. And yeah, so what is DHCP? DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This is pretty much in a real world scenario, how you get your IP addresses and how you're even able to connect to the internet. If you just plug in a basic router to your home network, it's going to already have DHCP configured. DHCP pretty much allows you to use your computer uh, as soon as you connect to Ethernet or Wi-Fi, and as soon as you get connected, you get an IP address. So the way that DHCP works is through a process called DORA. This is Discover, Offer, Request, and Acknowledge. This pretty much shows the framework of how the process works. So I'm going to briefly go over the process. So Discover is the host or the computer sending out a broadcast frame to obviously all of the nodes on the network until it finds the DHCP server. And once the DHCP server receives that broadcast request, it will send back an offer with an IP address. It's usually a unicast frame, I believe, to the endpoint saying, hey, I have this IP address available. Do you want this IP address? And then what the PC will do is we'll send a request saying, yes, I do want that IP address back to the uh, server. And in this case, it, have, it would have to be a broadcast because it has no IP address. So once the router receives that the computer wants to have this IP address, it will acknowledge that and then edit its tables and uh, lease tables to show that that IP address has been taken. So that's a little bit of the framework of DHCP. You might have already known that. If you did, then that's obviously a good start for you. All right, so let's get into this lab. So we have four PCs, four IP phones, two switches, and a multi-layer switch, pretty much a router. Um, and we have five di or six different VLANs. We have VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, the voice VLAN, which is 50, and the native VLAN. So I'm going to show you guys how to actually not only get... Uh, IP addresses for the computers, but also get IP addresses for the phones. And you may be asking, how do you know if there's IP addresses on the phone? I'm going to show you a very cool trick that will show you the uh, neighbor details of a neighboring device. So stay tuned. I already have these switches configured with the trunk ports, access ports, voice, voice VLAN ports, all that. So you don't have to worry about knowing those configurations. Um, if you have any questions on those, you can comment down below and I'll answer any questions. You also may be asking why there is a link down with the multi-layer switch and switch zero. This is because STP is currently uh, running on these switches because this is technically still a switch. So it does have to go through spanning tree protocol to uh, get rid of any loops that could happen. All right, so let's jump into the multi-layer switch. All right, so I'm currently in the line console configuration. Okay, so once you're in global config, so let's just act like I just got into the router. You're gonna do conf t. Once you're in global config, you're gonna do uh, IP DHCP. Ex if you want to exclude any addresses, meaning if you have any switches or routers that have static IP addresses, which you most likely will, or any servers that have static IP addresses that you don't want to be taken by a computer, you could specify that here. And since we have six different VLANs, we would have to do that for each individual VLAN. Um, so the way it works is you'll do the starting IP address. So let's do 10.0.10. Let's say one. And then let's say we want to have the first three IP addresses. So 10.0.10.3. So pretty much this will be uh, you want th this server will not allow those three IP addresses to get leased out to anybody, which means on our switches and our router, we have enough IP addresses to use without having to worry about leasing and renewing or the possibility of it changing, which in a production environment may be a bad thing. So see, there's that. And then since we have that configuration already done, we might as well just press the up arrow and change, uh, change the uh, third octet to a 20 since 
this is this would count for VLAN 20 and do the same thing for 30. Obviously, you would not want to have the same exact uh, excluded addresses for each VLAN since that would be pretty, I believe, insecure if you had the first uh, addresses designated to the switches and the routers. But that's besides the point. All right, so do VLAN 50. And then we'll do the native VLAN. We're not going to actually assign any addresses, but we're just going to go ahead and put the excluded addresses there. So that is done. So now what we're going to have to do is create a DHCP pool, which will tell you a pool is pretty much the, I guess, the network and the subnet, which pretty much specifies the range of IP addresses that can be leased out. So the command for this is IP DHCP pool, and then you'll have a name for it, which will be, we're going to go ahead and say VLAN 10. And as you can see, you're in the DHCP config part of the terminal. And this is a pretty uh, simple configuration from here. So let's say we want to do VLAN 10. So the first thing you do is press network. You can do a question mark. It'll be the network number. So that'd be a 10.0.10.0, which is the network name. And then the subnet mask, which would be 255.255.255.0. And I don't think there's anything else after that. So press enter. And there you go. So now that's not going to be it, though, because if the PC just got assigned an IP address, what would happen? It wouldn't be able to reach outside of its network. You're gonna, you need to have a default gateway, a DNS server, things like that. So next thing we're going to do is add a default router. And for this lab, I made the IP address of the router uh, just one. So 10.0.10.1 for all the VLANs, just to make this simple. 10.0.10.1. So that's that command. And then now we have DNS server. For this uh, lab, I don't have a DNS server. We can go ahead and just say 8.8.8.8. In a real world scenario, you may have an internal DHCP server or you might be using an external DHCP server. For example, 8.8.8.8 is Google's DHCP <clears throat> server. And another command you can use is domain name. If you do have a domain name, we're just gonna say jamesy.live, which is that's my website's domain name. All right, so now that we have that DACP pool configured, if I were to go to the VLAN 10 computer, let's just test to see if it works. I already had a static IP address. This to make sure the actual network itself worked, make sure you don't have any issues coming in. So we're requesting an IP address, and you can see it was successful. And if you notice, it actually picked the first IP address that was outside of the excluded range, which was 10.0.10.4. You can see it has a default gateway, the subnet mask, and the DNS records. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. All right, next. We could pretty much just do the same thing over and over again. Uh, IP DHCP full VLAN 20. And you just up arrow until you get to network. Change the 10 to a 20. Up arrow is probably the best tool for uh, the packet tracer or just any Cisco configurations. Because honestly, that's all you really have to do. Same D8, uh, DNS server. Um, there's something else. I think that might be. Yeah, I think that's it for that configuration. Oh, yes, domain name. So you can do domain name, jamesy.live, and let's test it. Look at that. See, that's as once you get it down once, this is pretty similar for a lot of Cisco environments. Once you get it down once, you could really repeat it very easily on the same device. So that's. VLAN 20 and we'll just rinse and repeat do the same thing for VLAN 30 and VLAN 40 Okay, network VLAN 30 and then we'll have the same domain name Same DNS server and the default router, which will be 30.1 So that's VLAN 30 done. Let's go ahead and see if the PC likes that And there you go it's, it's pretty satisfying seeing it work right away like that because yeah, once you configure it, the process is pretty quick. It'll send, it'll get an IP address within a couple seconds normally. Uh, VLAN 40, and then network 40.0, default router 40.0, DNS server, and then domain name. So we went from configuring this for like two, three minutes to configure it to like 20 seconds. Uh, this is pretty much how it is when you get good at Cisco products. It's just kind of rinse and repeat. 
Uh, DNS 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. uh, default router. And this is actually going to be, this is one of my favorite ones to do is the voice VLANs because normally you don't mess too much with voice VLANs. Yep. Okay, and then let's go. Do we already do VLAN 40? Well, we did. Let's see if it works. As you can see, it worked. So now you're, you may be asking, how do we see the IP addresses of the phones? Well, I think if you hover over them, you could see. Uh, yeah, you can see if there's an IP address if you hover. But in, in a real environment, that's not how it would work. You can't just look at it and say, hey, what is the IP address? There's no... Uh, then tell you on the screen. So my favorite tool, one of my favorite tools in Packet Tracer is, um, oh yeah, if you guys need any of the passwords, the password's always gonna be Cisco for my labs. Just to keep it simple. <clears throat> All right, so you may know about this command already, but if you're new to the CCNA prep, this may be a new command for you, which is very useful. It is called show CDP neighbor so CDP is Cisco Discovery Protocol. It is a layer two protocol, which pretty much helps um, identify neighboring devices. So for example, if you had a, uh, an environment where you don't know any of the neighboring devices, you could show, do show CDP neighbor, and it'll tell you all of the, it won't tell you the endpoints like computers, but it will tell you intermediate devices. An IP phone does count as an, as an intermediate device because it does work as a switch, technically. So as you can see, from this command, I now I can see my multi-layer switch router, two IP phones, and uh, the switch that's next uh, to the other one. But you don't see any IP addresses. So um, what you want to add to this command is the is the word detail or detail, where now you'll be able to see all of the IP addresses of the intermediate devices. So S1, there is no IP address. It will say entry addresses. As you can see, it's blank. Uh, I'll tell you the version, you know, image, the, that kind of stuff. So the IP phone, we can see that it has an address of 10.0.50.4. And then the other IP phone has an address of 10.0.50.5. So as you can see, it worked on that switch. Let's look on this one. Oops. Uh, oh, I don't know why I did that. Uh, okay. As you can see, IP phone 10.0.50.7, 10.0.50.6. So as you can see, the phones did work. I think we still do have one more uh, VLAN to do. I'm just going to do that real quick. VLAN 99, which is our native VLAN. I don't actually have any devices that are going to uh, get these IP addresses. Uh, okay. And then DH, or DNS server, and then domain name. Okay. So there's that. Now, that is how you configure a DHCP server on a Cisco router. I'm not going to completely go into this, but if you wanted to configure DHCP on a server, which more than likely in an enterprise environment, you will have a dedicated server for DHCP. Um, we go to services and DHCP. And as you can see, it's pretty similar to the CLI, except you just get to put in the numbers on this one straight screen and you get to specify the maximum amount of users things like that so obviously turn the service on so I'm not gonna get into that really because it's pretty self-explanatory on packet tracer but in a real world scenario it's a little different and you obviously want to see a different video for that all right so that is my little tutorial on how to configure DHCP on packet tracer so if this video was helpful for you guys to learn uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe um, for more videos like this comment down below what you guys would like to see next thank you guys for 500 subscribers I really appreciate it uh, the growth of the channel has been awesome and I appreciate you guys watching and I'm glad I can help you guys learn in the tech field and get better at things like this. So like I said, the link to this um, lab is on my website. The link is in the description. But yeah, other than that, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below. I respond to almost every comment unless it's nasty, things like that. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.